Welcome to On Deck, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. See, we're being active in the chat as always. I really appreciate it. Do me a favor while you're here, like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I don't know how you haven't already if you're here this early, but do it if you can. Also, thank you again for tuning in. We got a lot to talk about today. Of course, the Braves are finally into spring training. We're really getting into the meat of it, about to start some games, hopefully, and uh, we'll have a better idea as to what the Braves actually have within their bit, within their bench, within their bullpen, starting rotation, everything we're going to know before the season starts. So. We got a lot to talk about. Like I said, the Braves, of course, signing Jake Lamb and Philip Irvin. That actually happened today. Jake Lamb happened yesterday. Now, Jake Lamb is no slouch. Uh, he has struggled these past couple of years, but it was only 2017 when he was an all-star. So he's not quite that level of player anymore, but I think this is a very solid pickup by Atlanta. And as much flack as the front office gets for sometimes taking a chance on someone that's you know, past due, I actually really like this pickup. I like it a lot. And as much as I like Austin Riley, I think this is a little bit of insurance, just considering the youth uh, that Austin Riley possesses and, you know, the inexperience that goes along with that. I think this is some insurance plus a bench bat to add with it. It adds more competition to that already highly competitive bench. By the way, we're going to go through that in a few minutes. We're going to give it another look. Uh, just with adding all these new names in, we got to give it another look. So keep in mind, Johan Camargo... Jason Kipnis, Ihira Adrianza, and I would say even Travis Demirit. You know, granted, I know he just moved down to AAA technically. I think they're all competing for a bench spot. Uh, you know, some of these guys are going to be depth in Gwinnett ultimately, but I really think that we have a lot of depth in the bench that's, you know, a necessity now being that there's no DH. So with Travis, Travis Demirit, the guy we got from the Tigers off waivers, I think that the Braves probably picked him up for depth. Uh, they also needed him at the time. Keep in mind the options were really running out, right? You didn't sign Duvall. You know, Brett Gardner got signed not long after that. The, the options were really running out. You had to get something done. And then they got Jake Lamb, right? And they elected to move Travis to the minors for AAA depth. Not that they needed AAA depth per se, but if somebody gets hurt, he's, he's who you call up. And he's a guy that can hit just fine. And he's also seen time in the majors, which is something that a lot of these, you know, prospects out here, uh, you know, don't have. They've never seen time in the majors. They've never stood in a major league box. So that is something that he possesses. And though he struggled, that is something that you can't replace. So I think it's going to be, you know, good to see these moves. And uh, I think it's going to be good for the future. But, uh, you know, in case of injury, I think you need people like that. But if also if Jake Lamb doesn't come around, uh, Travis Demerit's the guy they're going to call up, you would think. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if he got called up within those circumstances. But I got to tell you, something makes me root for him a lot. Uh, something really makes me root for Travis Demerit. The fact that he was with the Braves a few years ago, got, got traded within that Shane Green trade, and they went and got him back tells me they see something in him. I've never watched the guy play. I couldn't tell you for sure, but something about him really makes me root for that guy and makes me really want him to be successful. So he's also got some power. Uh, he was in the AAA home run derby a few years back. Okay, yeah, he struggled, but he was also thrown into the fire. And all credit to Detroit. I actually really like Detroit. Their team these past few years has not been the best uh, at all. And I think that's fair to say. You know they've had a lot of young players come through there, and they're gonna—it's gonna pay off. They're gonna—they're do, doing what the Braves are doing, have done, and they're doing what the Marlins are doing right now. You know, any struggling team with you know not a whole lot of payroll is gonna start out young, but the problem you have with that is you throw a lot of good players, you know, that aren't quite ready for the majors into the majors, and they struggle. I think Travis Demerit is gonna be just fine. He may not see the majors this year, but I think looking forward, there's nothing wrong for having that guy within your depth and a guy that I think you can take a chance on. And again, he's got some power and he does have some skills. So it'll be exciting to see what the Braves wind up doing with the bench. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Now we need to focus on Philip Irvin. So Philip Irvin was claimed off of waivers today. He came from the Cubs technically, but he's been with about three or four teams over the past few months. Moved around a lot. This is another move to add depth to the bench. And Irvin has had a decent amount of success as a bench piece for the Reds from about 2017 to 2019. He had a 262 average and a 326 on base percentage within that time. And he had 17 homers. Okay, so not terrible numbers. He had eight triples, 23 doubles, and only 500 or so at bat. So 
He's also really good at hitting left-handed pitching, which makes him pretty good for a bench piece. Obviously, in the National League now, no DH. You need somebody that can hit left-handed pitching. You need somebody that can hit right-handed pitching. Obviously, this is a pretty good pickup if that's what you're looking for, which they certainly are. So let's take a deeper look into the bench utility competition. And I really wanted to take this look again because we've added these new names. And we've done this a couple times so far, but the Braves are really changing it up with all these new names and all these new you know, places people can go. So... The bullpen and the bench ha both had a lot of questions, right? We're going to talk about the bullpen in a second, but the bench is the only part now that I think still has questions. I think we're pretty much set on what the bullpen's going to be, pending Shane Green or not Shane Green. We pretty much know what it's going to look like, right? The roster this year is capped at 26, and then they'll expand to 28 in September. So you, in theory, you got 13 pitchers, 13 position players, right? Your pitchers are going to be... Obviously, Soroka, Freed, Ian Anderson, Morton, Smiley. Now, Soroka may not be there on opening day, but Ron Washington had an interview today with uh, Mad Dog on MLB Network, and he pretty much said he's betting on Soroka to be there on opening day. He's saying he wouldn't surprise if he's, he wouldn't be surprised if he's not there, but he's pretty much betting on him to be there. So we'll see if he's not there on opening day. He'll be there shortly after. But of course, in a pen, AJ Minter, Jacob Webb, Will Smith, Josh Tomlin, Grant Dayton. Tyler Matzik, Chris Martin, Waskari Noah. Those are all names you know. That is solely based on, you know, it's a mixture. Obviously, we know our starting rotation, you know, but the bullpen I just mentioned is solely based on what we saw last year. But there's a lot we don't know. There's a lot that I think that could be solved or competed over, rather, at spring training. So there's a lot we don't know. Um... I think this will be updated sooner rather than later. This is not even including names like Bryce Wilson, Kyle Wright, Patrick Weigel, Tucker Davidson, Tookie Toussaint, Philip Pfeiffer, Sean Newcomb, Kyle Muller, Luke Jackson, Jaseel De La Cruz, Chad Zabaka, and Victor Arano. Now, some of those names you're not going to see, right? Obviously, we don't have enough time to see all those guys. But you're going to see a couple of them, whether they get called up because somebody gets hurt, whether they get called up because somebody is unsuccessful, or whether or not they beat out somebody in spring training for the job. You're going to see one of those guys at some point. I think, you know, Grant Dayton is a guy that can, you know, that job could be taken by one of these young arms uh, that's adapting to the bullpen. I think that could certainly happen. Grant Dayton, you know, was all right in the pen last year, but he was not the shining star. I think there's no harm in saying that. But, you know, I, I think you could also compete in theory with Waskari Noah. I personally really like Waskari Noah. I think he's got gas, and I think he's got, you know, a lot of potential. But if he's not consistent... You know, he's going to lose that spot because they have so much depth in the pin. And that's what's, you know, the uncertainty in the pin. It, it's, you have a lot of options. It's not so much you don't have the talent. You, you certainly have talent within the Braves bullpen. I think it's more so you have a lot of options and you don't really know who's who at the moment uh, in a lot of ways. But uh, there's plenty of room for improvement and plenty of room for shifting in the bullpen. So let's talk about the position players, right? This is your other 13 in theory. Ronald Acuna, Freddie Freeman, Marcelo Zuna, Travis Darno, Ozzie Albies, Austin Riley, Christian Pache, Dansby Swanson. With, you know, pending an injury, those guys aren't going anywhere. And I would throw in William Contreras or Alex Jackson, uh, whoever the Braves end up going with. I, I think they're obviously in there as a backup catcher. So, in theory, you got about four spots left. I think you throw in Johan Camargo. I think he's a definite. He's played really well in the Dominican League. I don't know how many of you guys check that out, but his team actually ended up winning what would be the World Series of the Dominican League. His team won it. Uh, I think Ender Inciarte may start the season there, depending on what happens in spring training. They're paying him too much money to be in Gwinnett. That's just my opinion. Uh, William Contreras, like I mentioned. Jason Kipnis uh, and Jake Lamb, just be, based on what I know, based on you know history alone, that is what I'm looking at right now. What happens at spring training? What happens early on in the season? Who knows? But the, you know, at the moment, there's not as much moving around uh, with the names I just left off. Those being Abraham Almani, Jake, Jack Mayfield, Ehire Adri Adrianza, Travis Demare, and Alex Jackson. There's certainly room for competition, but it's not like the bullpen where we have a lot of uncertainty. We have a lot of, you know, just a lot of things that we don't for sure know uh you know the bullpen you have a lot of options the bench not so much and that's why you keep seeing names being added i think the braves are going to filter through these guys and see who's who's who and i think it's going to happen rather quickly so it's not near as uncertain as the bullpen and i use uncertain very lightly there the bullpen's not 
the bullpen is far from uncertain. I think it's more unsettled at this point. But I think there's still plenty of room for competition in both of those areas. So let's weigh it out. What are the pros and cons, right? I think we're all aware that the bullpen is not going to be what it was last year, to the elite level it was. Because, frankly, the bullpen last year was the best bullpen I've seen by the Braves in a very long time. Uh, it just was. Um, and especially compared to where they were in the years, in a couple of years prior. Um, but I also don't think they have to be that elite this year. Last year, we needed them. We needed them drastically. Now it's because they're starting pitching. It's all about weighing it out, right? The bullpen not being elite isn't that big of a deal to me considering the Braves are going to have a major upgrade in starting pitching. So I think the Braves aren't going to be too shabby out of the pen. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of names there that can be more than successful. Uh, and if you add Shane Green, I, I think, you know, you're right there where you were last year. You know, of course you lost Melanson, but I really think the Braves are going to be fine just based on the young arms coming up. But I don't think that the pin, the pin needs to be that way because the starting rotation, you add guys in like Charlie Morton, a veteran starting pitcher, as probably your number four pitcher, right? Drew Smiley being your number five. Mike Soroka, Max Fried, Ian Anderson, no reason to think they're not going to be successful this year. Obviously, we've seen crazier things if they if they aren't successful. But I really think that the fact that you have that good a starting pitching and the fact that you have you know, your offense virtually the same, obviously it's going to be hard to repeat, but your offense is virtually the same. I think that there's you know a lot of untapped potential in that pin, and I think we're going to see some growing pains. But guys like Kyle Wright, guys like Bryce Wilson, to me, you know, keep in mind there's also Kyle Muller, Tucker Davis, and Patrick Weigel. Guys like that, you know, make me not so much worried about it. Uh, I was on the forefront on bringing back Shane Green, and I still am. If the Braves sign Shane, if the Braves sign Shane Green right now, I would be very happy about it. I like Shane Green. He's pretty much lights out. Very rarely does he, you know, have a bad night. Uh, and I'd still like to get him, but it's not make or break, you know, in, in the way that I originally thought it was. And it's also not make or break, you know, in the way that a lot of people still think it is. I think the Braves are going to be okay with or without him. But the longer time goes on with the Braves signing bench pieces, I really think their priority is elsewhere. It could happen. Don't get me wrong. You know, I would prefer it to happen. But I really think that the Braves' priority is on the bench. And, you know, I don't see a problem with that considering what I just told you. The Braves are starting to bank on those young arms. You know, two years ago, when the Braves went out and got Chris Martin, Shane Green, Mark Melanson, the young arms were far from ready. I think we're starting to see some some difference. You know, some, you know, I know Kyle Wright had a bad night, you know, in the postseason last year, but Bryce Wilson had a pretty good one. You know, and I really think that the Braves are going to start relying on those guys to have good nights. So, I really think that the bench needed the most attention, not the bullpen. You know, let's be honest. You know, you lose Charlie Culberson, who's a Swiss Army knife, can play anywhere. You know, in Mr. Consistency, Nick Markakis, you lose those two guys, you know, they're, at least Markakis is yet to be re-signed. You had to replace them, and that's a hard thing to do, you know, especially for the price. But you're also not going to have a DH, so somebody reliable has got to be there to hit for the pitcher, to, you know, to be there in a time of need. So I wanted Adam Duvall to return as much as the next guy, but it didn't happen, so we got to move on. I think that the moves that were made were, cl were quietly really good. Jake Lamb could surface to be a good hitter again. Uh, he doesn't have to be a great hitter, but he could be a, an effective hitter. Travis Demirit, I think there's plenty of reason to have high hopes for him, uh, for a major league call-up possibly, and if not this year, maybe next. And there's nothing wrong with having depth like I mentioned earlier. But I think that the Braves have not diminished. They've reallocated elsewhere. Instead of having an elite pin, they have a good one. But instead of having uninhabited spots in the starting rotation, you have a well-built staff. So you have to reallocate, you have to fix, you know, it's it, it's more of a whole team now. It's not so much that the bullpen's really good, starting pitching's really struggling, and the offense is on fire. It's not that. You have a full team, and I really hope you see my point. So let's talk about starting pitching. Charlie Morton has reported to spring training, and that's already more than what Cole Hamels did last year. Just going to say it because uh, I know you guys are thinking it. He came out in an interview this week, and it was really good to hear from him. Obviously, he played with the Braves back in the late 2000s. And if you may remember seeing him in 2017 as a member of the Astros, who, of course, won the World Series that year, but do you remember who recorded the last out that year? 
It was actually Charlie Morton and Brian McCann, former Brave. Uh, regardless of how you feel about that World Series, you guys know how I feel about it. This is something worth noting. Brian McCann, who we all love, I think, you know, if we're honest, uh, encouraged Charlie Morton to sign back uh, with Atlanta. What I found interesting was the reason. It was not the team. It was not the young players. It was not the coaching. Because, frankly, Charlie Morton sort of knew all that. You know, he, he knew it was an exciting place to be. He knew that, you know, the coach, he knew who the coaches were. He's been with Snicker before. Uh, he's actually been with Rick Kranitz, too, uh, in Philadelphia, actually. So what was interesting to me was that Brian McCann encouraged him to sign back with the Braves because of the minor league, the major league, and I would even say the spring training facilities. So I know that the minor leagues is not really relevant to this conversation, but you go look at the Braves facilities, all right? They were all a factor in bringing in Charlie Morton. So you remember what I said the other day about, you know, the Braves being an attractive organization, right? You got a hot team. You got a brand new stadium. That matters. And this is just one of the things I'm talking about. I have been to, I believe, 18 Major League Baseball parks, okay? I've been to a lot of new stadiums. I've been to, I went to Globe Life Field, you know, last season. Uh, you guys were with me practically. So I've also been to some of the old ones as well. Fenway Park, Wrigley Field. Now, don't get me wrong. I really love them, but they're older. I've also been to Tropicana Field, which is, you know, widely considered the lowest point within Major League Baseball in terms of stadiums, but I personally really like it, but that's beside the point. So, in a way, I've seen all the ups and downs, right? St. Louis has got a very nice stadium. I would say Milwaukee has a very nice stadium. The other one I would say has a very nice stadium is actually Houston. And hear me out here, that stadium is nice from every perspective. I actually toured it, right? I got to see all the underground stuff. I got to see the batting cages. Got to see you know the underground stuff. I got to see where you come in, the field. It's all really nice. It's great from a fan perspective, but it's also good from a player's perspective. And you got to think, Charlie Morton went from that to t Tampa, right? So it's not like he's, you know, he, he went from a really up here to a really down here. And... Look, personally, again, I really like the Trop more than a lot of other people do. But the facilities aren't there at a major league level uh, in a lot of ways, at least compared to Houston, compared to Atlanta. So as much, much as they struggle to get fans, the stadium, you know, it's just not that premier. So that being said, I think McCann influencing this decision says a lot about the facilities that the Braves have, and there's something to be proud of as an organization. So I would not be surprised if that's a factor, just inside baseball here for a second, I would not be surprised if that is a factor in negotiations and in the overall process, you know, within a player of thinking where to go versus should I, should I stay. We all know the debate with Marcelo Zuna, you know, this offseason. Maybe he thought, I really like that park. You know, I want to see some fans in it, but I really like that park. I really like the facilities. I like the coaches. I like the team. I like the young players coming up. You know, and I was very successful here. So it's a good environment. And look, I love Wrigley Field. I love Fenway Park, even New Yankee Stadium. Any, anywhere that's Major League Baseball, I like them all pretty much. But there is a difference as a player. And out of all the parks I've been to, none makes a modern stadium and a classic vibe more than Truist Park. And I know that, that sounds real fan service-y, and I, I know that. But I'm telling you, it, it might be subjective, but it's true. And I can only tell you my opinion after seeing all of those. But McCann, Brian McCann, if you're watching this, I appreciate it. Uh, keep keep that going. So getting Charlie Morton is obviously a win-win for both sides. Uh, it adds to the pitching depth, obviously. Helps out starting pitching tremendously. And it also gives him a chance at a successful final run if he chooses to stay in Atlanta for the next couple of years, right? Charlie Morton also has a very good track record with teammates and coaches. He's, he's not a... You know, a guy that's going to come in and, and it cause problems. He's a guy that's going to come in and do his job quietly and be successful, hopefully. Um, you know, Snickers saw Charlie in the minors. And Rick Kranitz, like I mentioned a minute ago, uh, Braves pitching coach, also saw Charlie in Philadelphia. And they're all for Charlie Morton being on the Braves. So you got to think he's feeling at home. Speaking of feeling at home, the best way for you to feel at home on the baseball diamond is by designing your own custom glove. Okay. And to do that, to get your name and number monogrammed onto it, do me a favor, go check out Lorandi Gloves. 
These are high quality gloves with about 18 colors to choose from. And the best thing about it is you won't break the bank buying them. So go check it out, www.lorandagloves.com. Phone number on the screen right there for a list of options, prices, and get your brand new high quality custom glove today. I'll tell you this company is a personal favorite of mine. I actually know the people that run it. Uh, I actually got a glove myself a while back. Uh, this one's on loan from my, from my little brother right now. But uh, it's, look, this, this stuff is high quality. It's good leather. It is a really good glove, and you can customize them. That's what's so cool about it. You can get whatever color you want, okay? Go check it out. Uh, tell them I sent you. The link is in the description if you're more interested. But go check it out. I would really appreciate it, and I know they would too. By the way, they want you to be just as happy with the glove as they are with your money. Go check them out. I promise you won't be disappointed. So let's talk about some other headlines. Eric Young returns. So another guy that has returned to Braves country, not only Charlie Morton, but also Eric Young. EY missed last season after opting out of the 2020 season. Uh, you all know why. He was informed that it would be dangerous for him to work under those conditions in the pandemic, and he was, of course, in a high-risk category, so it's going to be really good to see EY back. You know, EY, I've met EY. EY is a very nice guy, and, uh, you know, he brings an energy similar to the way Marcelo Zuna does. If you watch any behind-the-scenes videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. He's very exciting. He does really well with Ozzy Albies, Ronald Acuna, that crowd. And, you know, the young crowd, really, he's, he's very much a positive person, I think, off the bench. And it's going to be good to see him back on the field this year. But, uh, you know, that'll be exciting to see. Another guy that has arrived to spring training is none other than Hall of Famer Chipper Jones. And something, I know we're talking about being at home, but something that always makes me feel at home when it comes to the Braves is number 10 being on the field. With that said, his role will look something like this. He's planning to be present, you know, to work with players a few hours before most regular season home games, okay? And if you remember when this news first came out, I told you that I thought Chipper has probably been doing something like this or had some role like this before, and it, he has. Uh, you know, what Snicker said yesterday kind of confirms it. You know, I'll quote him. I told him I've been trying to get him more involved for years, Snicker said, I'm really excited for the players and for me to bounce stuff off of him. And you talk about a guy who brings instant credibility and a passion for what he does. He's going to be a great resource for those guys and the coaches and myself. So high praise from the Braves manager for Chipper Jones for good reason. Uh, obviously, he's one of my favorite players growing up, but he also is one of the best hitters in recent times. OK, of course, he's a switch hitter. You know, that helps Ozzy Albies. He's a third baseman, Austin Riley, Freddie Freeman. He's got a very good relationship with, has already kind of mentored Freddie in a lot of ways hitting before. And he's also done a lot, uh, you know, around the Braves in the past. He worked with the Upton brothers, specifically BJ, when BJ Upton was going through all those struggles with the Braves. I think this is going to be really good for the Braves offense. I think, you know, a guy like Travis Darno could benefit from him. Maybe not so much Ozuna, just because his swing is so unpredictable and so different than what a lot of other people do. But I think, you know, guys that are consistent hitters, Dansby Swanson could learn a lot from from Chipper Jones, I think. Uh, but the guy that I really want to see develop the most from Chipper is Austin Riley because there's history there. Chipper has worked with Austin Riley before. Chipper has done a lot with Austin Riley. I think his fielding, uh, you know, Austin Riley is a great fielder already at third, but I think there's nothing wrong with getting some more advice from a Hall of Fame third baseman. But I think that's a really good thing to see. Uh, you know, Chipper is a guy that, you know, knows hitting. And you can't tell him otherwise. Can't tell me otherwise. He knows hitting. You know, 468 homers is pretty good. Yeah, you know, and it got him into the Hall of Fame. But also hitting 300 from the left and the right side is also pretty good too. So he's a very functional hitter, and I think that's something that, you know, I've always thought Chipper could be a hitting coach. I've always thought that because, he you know, of – the method, you know, he uses, you know, you hear Chipper talk about his hitting uh, in different documentaries that the Braves air all the time, and the way he thinks about it is just at a different level than a lot of other people, I think. So I think this is going to be very good for him. He's obviously standing behind the cage today at spring training. Hopefully he'll be there for the remainder of spring training, and of course he will be there throughout the season. So that is pretty much all the headlines. I am going to get into some of you guys' comments in a few minutes, but We've been going here for about, you know, 30 minutes or so, but I am going to get to you guys' comments 
in just a few minutes, but uh, again, I want to promote Lorandi Gloves, okay? Lorandi Gloves right here is one of my favorite companies. These guys have been so good to me. Uh, Lou, the guy that runs it, very nice guy, cares about, you know, everything within your, he wants you to like that your glove, okay? You design it yourself, you monogram it yourself, you put the number on it, you put your name on it, and it's built to last. So go check out those guys, uh, their number and, of course, website is on the screen. Go check those guys out, and uh, I'm excited to be on board with them going forward. Uh, we do still have Autograph of the Day coming up. I will do that after I read some of you guys' comments. Got a, got a pretty good one for today to start us off with Autograph of the Day. I'm really excited about that as well. So let's, uh, let's get to some of you guys' comments. Uh, the Jake Lamb signing was huge. Yep, it sure was. Uh, if Dustin seems to think that Jake Lamb could start if he plays well and can show he's back and completely healthy from his shoulder surgery, especially if Riley struggles or if by somehow there is a DH spot. There won't be a DH spot. I am pretty much for certain there will not be a DH spot. Um, but I do think that if Riley struggles, it could move into a platoon role if, you know, by some by some way that Jake Lamb is just on fire. And, you know, if Riley's struggling that bad, obviously, yeah, he'll get called down and Jake Lamb could take that spot. But uh, I really think that, you know, Riley to me is the future at third base, whether he's there this year or not. I think he is the future. But uh, Jameson, good to hear from you. The Braves are building the depth in the bench with those two, last two moves they have done. I think they are building depth not only, you know, in the bench, but also... I think they're building depth at utility, which is something that I think is very underrated. Charlie Culberson is the epitome of utility, okay? Like I mentioned earlier, Swiss Army Knife, that is a big loss in my humble opinion. That is a very big loss, a loss that I think a lot of people are sort of taking for granted. But I think you've got to consider the fact that they got to have outfielders and infielders. Charlie could play anywhere, right? To me, that's the biggest loss, uh, you know, because of the COVID season and because he, you know, the DH. Charlie was sort of pushed to the wayside, and a lot of people I don't think respected how good he was on defense in the infield and the outfield. Uh, you know, we all remember that play in the outfield. You know, throwing it to Brian McCann. Uh, you know, I believe it was against Miami. We all remember that. You know, that's sort of stuck in our mind. When, we, when I think of Charlie Culberson, that's what I think of because he was that good on defense. But he was also a pretty good hitter. Uh, there's a ball up there. I'll talk about it one of these days. It's signed by Charlie, and it says Vince Scully's last call. And that's because Vince Scully's last call was Charlie Culberson hitting a walk-off for the Dodgers. So as much as we say Charlie Clutch, Charlie Clutch has been Charlie Clutch since before he got to the Braves. We just don't know that. I really think that uh, you know, that's a very big loss, and I think these bench moves are sort of compensating for that. They're also compensating for the loss of Adam Duvall, Nick Markakis, guys like that that you know I think we could have got back. Uh, I really think we could have got Adam Duvall back. I for certain, though, that we probably could have got Nick Markegas back, and the court's still out on it. You may see him come back in some bench role, but uh, you know, at the moment, I think it's more so you know he's looking for a full time spot. Nick Markegas is at the point in his career where he wants three thousand hits, and he to do that, he's going to need to play every day, and I don't see that happening for the Braves. I could see that happening for a team like the Tigers, a team like. The, you know, the Marlins at the moment, even though they were competitive last year, they're certainly still having growing pains. You know, a team that needs an outfielder would take a guy like Nick Markakis. And I think a team that needs an outfielder would also take an Ender Enciarte. The problem with Ender is, of course, his bat, right? Ender Enciarte is probably going to start on the bench. It would not surprise me if he got traded away uh, with a prospect attached to him just because he's getting paid way too much for what he brings. And it's not the Braves' fault, you know, Everybody, you know, criticizes the Braves for not dishing out long-term contracts, and this is why they don't. Eight million is what Ender will be making this year. Uh, whether the Braves pay that in full or not, whether he goes to another team and the Braves pay most of his salary, who knows? But eight million, right? For perspective here, Soroka and Freed are making two million each. You know, so Dansby's making less than that. So I really think, as much as I look, I like Ender. You know, he's an All-Star a few years back. He came off that All-Star year you know, 200 hits and didn't do much following that. And he's really struggled since then, even in the field to some degree. And as much as I like uh, Ender, I, I think it wouldn't surprise me at all if he got attached to a trade. 
based on his salary and based on what he brings to the Braves at the moment, based on necessity. I don't think that they need him anymore. You got a center fielder that's arguably better already in Christian Pache. You got Ronald Acuna, and you got Marcelo Zuna in left. I just don't know where he fits in. And really, with this competition at the bench, unless he you know, brings up his level, I don't see him remaining on the Braves, at least not in a playing role. But that's just my opinion. So let's get into some of you guys' uh, some more of you guys' comments. Shane Green or We're Not Complete. Uh, I kind of stated what I thought on that. Uh, as much as I'd like to get Shane Green, trust me, I would. Trust me, I, our whole family likes Shane Green. I predicted Shane Green to come to the Braves before he ever did. I actually thought Ender would be traded for him, but I did predict Shane Green to come. He ended up being traded for Travis Demir and I believe a couple other prospects, and the Braves got him. Uh, not to my surprise. He was the guy I had my eye on because we needed relievers. He was the guy I had my eye on pretty early on, and I was correct on the fact that the Braves were going to get him, and they did. And, of course, you know the Tigers didn't have any need for him. You know they, He was their closer, and I believe he had, he was undefeated uh, in in saves. Uh, he was something, you know, I can't remember the exact number, but it was pretty high. Uh, he was arguably one of the best closers in baseball at that time, and he got moved to the Braves, became an eighth inning guy behind Melanson. You know the story after that. All the writers are saying Soroka and Freed will regress. Hope they're wrong, and hope our young pitchers finally put it all together. Count Wright is too good uh, to be as bad as he's been sometimes. I agree with that. In terms of the writers uh, saying Soroka and Freed will regress, I understand where they're coming from. Freed, you know, hit a ceiling last year. I don't, you know, but I'm not. I don't think there's any reason to think that Freed will regress. Uh, you know, he might compared to what he did last year, but you know, not every year is going to be your best year. But it's really easy for a rider to sit at home and you know criticize a guy that's coming off an Achilles tendon injury and say that he's going to regress. I think it's very easy to say that. I think those guys are going to prove themselves. You know, here's the thing. Uh, media, just in general, doesn't have a very good, how do I put it? They don't have a very good sensor on the Braves. They predicted them to be third in the National League, is, league this year. Does anybody believe that's what's going to happen? Because I certainly don't. As much as the Mets have done this year, I just can't see it. I can't see the Mets beating the Braves. That's just my personal opinion. We'll see what happens. The eyeball test and the common sense test tell me otherwise. Uh, it, it just doesn't take much to see. And, you know, a lot of guys that, I know I'm kind of going off the deep end here, but a lot of guys that criticize Austin Riley are solely looking at a piece of paper, all right, with numbers on it. They're not looking at what that guy, <laughs> the talent level he possesses. Okay, we see that day in, day out. And you look at his fielding prowess at third base. Mad Dog and uh, Ron Washington talked about this today. The talent level is there. He's going to be an elite player one day. And I firmly believe that, and I'll stick by that. But, like I said, it's very easy for those writers to sit at home and say that people are going to regress. I don't choose to believe it. I choose to let those guys show what they got on the field, and I'll react to it if that does happen. But I just don't see it happening. But I do appreciate you putting that in here, Base Alaska. You're always pretty good at putting in comments that make me want to answer. Uh, Baby Yoda brings his greetings as well. Uh, the Braves are a complete team with depth. Bring on the Dodgers, Padres, any, or the oh New York Yankees. Or the White Sox chop the way to the World Series 2021. I don't see any reason to think that the Braves won't be a, you know, competitor this year, a contender rather. I think the Braves have only improved. I think they're a very good team, and something about the analytics has never quite matched the Braves, and they've always proved them wrong. So I think there's no reason to think that the Braves won't do that again. And based on what they have at starting pitching right now. I just don't see how you could say they haven't improved. So I agree with you. Uh, I would like to see Sean Newcomb get another chance in the bullpen. Yeah, I mentioned him. I didn't focus on him a whole lot because I talked about him last show. But Sean Newcomb is a guy that has really good stuff. Very similar to Kyle Wright. He has very good stuff. He just hasn't quite put it all together. Uh, he was better in the bullpen than he was a starter. Uh, I'll tell you that for sure. But I really think that, you know, Sean Newcomb is a guy that if you set him up for success, he can, he can be successful. I, I do think so, too. Uh, you also point out that Will Smith is going to perform a lot better. Uh, and I think he is going to get, you know, back where he needs to be. I think Will Smith is only poised for success. And uh, 
I, I really think that personally Will Smith had struggled last year because he never really got his feet underneath him. And I think that's going to change soon. I think Will Smith is, uh, you know, obviously he was one of the best relievers in baseball before last year. He's an all-star. You know, there's no reason to think he can't get back to that level. Uh, he had coronavirus at the start of last season. So, like I said, let him get his feet from underneath him. Let him get, frankly, adjusted to Atlanta because I don't know that he even has yet. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens after that. Um some of the starting pitching could be used out of the pen in close games in the postseason. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, we saw a little bit of that last year. We saw a little bit of that a uh, year prior. You know, anything can happen. At the end of the day, in the postseason, it's Johnny Holstaff. If you can win a game and it's close, nothing wrong with that per se. I would prefer that to not happen because I think Mike Soroka, Max Fried, Ian Anderson – Drew Smiley, Charlie Morton, all those guys will be a lot more successful starting a game, and I think the pin is going to be just fine. Uh, I really think that uh, it's going to be good. But, uh, you know, w get your comments in. We are going to uh, do autograph of the day here pretty soon. Uh, Super Chats, like I said, are always appreciated. They get you a priority in terms of me being able to talk to you. i got a lot of comments in here uh, today. But, uh, as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, Atlanta Kid posts, uh, he said something that's pretty good here. Ronald Acuna is very loyal and gets along with Snit EY greatly. EY we talked about earlier, and Ozzy seems to be his prime possession. Yeah, the, both of those guys seem to be pretty loyal to the Braves. They both took sweetheart deals. They both, you know, kind of seem to have the same mentality that the front office does. You know, and national media doesn't quite get this, but, you know, they, they thought that the Braves gypped Ozzy Albies. The Braves gave Ozzy Albies a long-term contract very early on in his career. And that's something they don't do for a lot of people. And I think it, it said a lot about Ozzy Albies. And I think Ozzy Albies is going to be a premier player for years to come. There's no, no reason to think otherwise. Um, Jameson says it's good to hear back from EY. Good, good, that, uh, you know, good to see he's back. And he loves the fact that Chipper Jones is back. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. I think all those guys, you know, coming in and uh, I think all those guys coming in and coming back to the Braves and coming in, I really think that it's, it's going to be beneficial. I, I think having EY back, getting that energy back from him, having Chipper back, you know, frankly, the knowledge that guy has is going to be very good for the Braves. I don't think there's any reason to think otherwise. Uh Ronnie says the biggest problem with Ender is his paycheck. Completely agree. Uh, if he was making two million a year, um, you know, it'd be different. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate your comment. Uh, yeah, I, Vince Scully's last call is one of my favorite calls for baseball, especially considering uh, the guy that happened with Culberson. Uh, you know, if you don't know this, Charlie Culberson, I I interviewed Charlie. He's a very nice guy. I like him a lot. You know, just on a human level, I like him a lot as a player too. But you know. That Vince Scully walk-off, if you've never seen it, go watch it. Just just go watch it. You'll thank me later. Uh, is Felix Hernandez still in our system? No. I believe he got picked up by the Orioles, I want to say. I believe that's where he's at now. Uh, what would you trade for Josh Hader? Not a lot. Uh, I just don't think we're in the market that bad for a reliever for one inning. I just really don't. I like Josh Hader a lot. If we could get him for not much... I'd love to do it. If we could get him for one or two young prospects, yeah. But I'm not trading the farm for him. I wouldn't even trade the farm for Clevenger last year, if you remember. If, you, if you're a long-time subscriber, you know. Last year, I said I don't want to trade the farm for Mike Clevenger. Would it have been successful for the Braves in the postseason? Maybe. But I didn't want to lose the next 10 years of these prospects for one player. And based on the results the Padres got, Mike Clevenger was hurt after that for – the rest of the season. So I really think that Atlanta's very underrated as Justin Rettman points out. I, I really think that the Braves are very underrated and it's not their fault. It's frankly, the algorithms don't line up and you know, you watch him go watch MLB network for a couple hours. I've been watching it a lot. Uh, now that spring training is heating up. The reason I say that they have said pretty much exclusively multiple times since I, just on the off occasion, I watch it that this, mentality that around the Braves is ridiculous. You know, this is a three-year-in-a-row National League East champion, and they don't get the respect they deserve. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. 
I just think that the Braves are going to prove him wrong. Shouldn't we re-sign Yasiel Puig? He would be dirt cheap on a one-year deal and would be better than Enciarte, Camargo, Kipnis, Lamb, Kung Fu Panda, any other bench players at the plate. As much as I agree with that, uh, the Braves, I think, are a little bit tied up with money. That's, that's why you're seeing these deals happen. I don't know what Puig would need. I think the Braves could get him, but they're weighing their options. And, you know, with Puig, I... Puig is an interesting character in himself a lot of the time. Uh, but with Puig, I, I think he's probably looking for a full-time role. And I think a lot of teams could use him as, he, as a full-time role. And in the outfield, there's just nowhere to put him. I don't think Puig is looking... I think Puig has too much left in his career to have one at bat a game, if you get where I'm going with that. But uh, as I, I get what you're saying. I see down below you said that if Pache struggles, you can bring him in. Why not wait? Nobody else is going to get Puig, I mean, for the time being. So there's obviously a disconnect there. Um, but I'm honestly surprised a lot of teams haven't got, gotten Puig, especially last year when the Braves were, you know, the Braves did sign him, and then he got COVID, and then it was over. I'm surprised nobody got him two weeks later. You know, so I, I don't know what, what the disconnect with Puig is right now. But uh, I, I just, personally, I, I think that Puig is looking – to finish his career on a full-time basis. And he's still got plenty of that career left. Any thoughts on the report that the Braves have only $5 million left to work with in the budget? I think there's probably some truth to that. Uh, you know, with the, you know, I mentioned last, I, I had a video maybe two or three weeks ago now about Braves breaking down the budget. A lot of you guys watched it, did pretty well. But in that I talked about, you know, based just based solely on what, what the Braves would have paid last year. The problem is, you didn't have any attendance last year. So the Braves do have a bit of a drop-off. That's why you're seeing these signings like Jake Lamb and others that are a little bit cheaper, still good pickups, but they're a little bit cheaper, and I think you're going to continue to see that. Now, if they see, see if they see somebody that is a priority that they need, they, they are going to go get them. Number one example, Marcelo Zuna. They viewed that as a priority. I think next year, Freddie Freeman will be that priority. But at the moment, hopefully it changes Money's tight all across Major League Baseball. So it would not surprise me. At the end of the day, we're not going to know the ins and outs of their, you know, money completely. Uh, I, I My video was solely based on if they were to spend as much as they were going to, you know, coming up in next year. But you never know. Uh, Liberty Media might say, you know, here's a couple extra millions of dollars. You know, do what you need to do, Alex. But they've done that before. Alex Anthopoulos came out a couple years ago and said he pretty much, you know, that uh, that I uh, can't think of his name at the moment, but the owner of Liberty Media pretty much told him that do what you need to do, we'll make it happen when they were first in the running. So I just think that they don't necessarily need that. The offense is going to be fine. Starting pitching is going to be a lot better than last year, and your bullpen still going to be fine. So I just don't think they view it as a necessity to really go get anything else right now. Uh, but I will add this. In a month from now, you may see that the Braves decide, hey, our bullpen is not where we want it to be at the moment. We need to go add something. Then you could see them go spend some money on a reliever. Uh, if Shane Green's still on the market, I think you see that at that point, uh, at the moment. Uh, would it... Oh, Josh Hader pitches multiple innings. You're right, though. The Brewers want too much. Yeah, and there's, they should want too much. Um they should they should want too much. I think that the fact that Josh Hader look Josh Hader is an elite reliever, but I think you get the same results. And he's also a very marketable guy, so you hear a lot about him. But I think you get the same results in a Shea Green, in a Mark Melanson. It might not be as fiery and as exciting as you want it to be, but I and look Hader. I, I'll give you credit, Bad Bab. Josh Hader does pitch multiple innings when he needs to. But I really think that personally, I would rather, I'd rather keep those young guys in the farm, especially if they're going to want three to four, you know, even two if they're really high up there. I, I don't want to make that trade personally. Uh, no Shane Green if we have no money. Uh, I've been talking about this pretty much this whole episode there, uh, but yeah, Shane Green to me is going to be if needed only. I, I think that the Braves are really looking to the bench more so. Uh, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. We are going to do autograph of the day real quick. Got a pretty fun one for you today, actually. 
uh, if you don't mind, I am going to go ahead and move to that. A few years back, or, you know what, I'll start by saying this. You know, I always tell you guys that if you want autographs, if you want to meet players, if you want to, you know, get a, get an up-close and personal look at players and talk to them and really have an interaction with them, go to spring training. My first trip to spring training was a few years ago. Uh, we we kind of toured the whole spring training site. The way it is in Florida is you got Lakeland, that's where the Tigers are. You got Dunedin, that's where the Blue Jays are. The Pirates is somewhere in between that. The Phillies is somewhere up there. They're all around the same area. The Braves are a lot further down. Uh, last year, you know, they moved to Cool Today, but they were at Disney, and they're still a good distance away. But my first trip was actually with the Tigers. I went with the Tigers. I actually went with a family of Willie Horton. Uh, Willie Horton, if you don't know who that is, you're missing out. Willie Horton, uh, his number is retired by the Detroit Tigers. And uh, he's 23, he's got a statue at the park. He's not in the Hall of Fame, but there's a story behind that too. Go look up Willie Horton if uh, if you want to. But, uh, you know, I, I think that um, you should. But, yeah, Willie Horton, his family invited me to go with a group of soldiers that uh, ended up going to spring training. And you guys all know who's on the Tigers. There's a very Hall of Fame level player on the Tigers right now, and I had it in my mind that I really wanted to meet said Hall of Famer. That guy's Miguel Cabrera. And I took this down there. Okay? I met Miguel Cabrera. There's a package you can buy. I actually got to do this for free. It was really cool. Can't underestimate how cool this was. Uh, this particular year, Miguel Cabrera walked up to my section and just started signing autographs and of course, there was uh, you know there was kids out there, and I let them go first because that's what you do. But uh, it's rule number one when you're chasing autographs. But uh, I had this, and Miguel Cabrera here. I'll get it up close. Miguel Cabrera actually saw this. I pulled it out. It's obviously full size. I pulled it out, and uh, he goes, "Ooh!" Like because he doesn't get to do this very often. I would think you know this is a pretty premier piece. I bought it, spent good money on it, and uh, got it signed. It's obviously signed uh, Triple Crown. I don't know if you guys can see it. Triple Crown 2012. So the next year, after I had such a good year the first year, I took another piece uh, that I bought on the Internet. I took another piece down there, and I got this. Okay? It's got a World Series patch, 2012. His name's on the back, of course. And it is also signed right there. So that'll be framed one of these days when I have a little bit more space. But that's just something that I know you guys have never seen before. It's obviously not behind you. And, uh, you know, that's uh, obviously some of my favorite pieces. He is on a ball up there somewhere, uh, but I didn't bring that one down. But uh, he actually signed a really cool piece also uh, for the soldiers that I went with. He signed a bat for him, you know, Miguel Cabrera. Game used, I believe, at least game issued, but it was really cool, and it was just a very good experience. I met Jack Morris. I met Ron Gardenhire. I actually interviewed Ron Gardenhire uh, that second year, and he was more than more than kind. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but when he retired and he elected to retire, I did a pretty nice piece on him, uh, and that was because he was very nice to me. Uh, but, you know, look, I recommend going to spring training. I really recommend going to Joker Merchant Stadium. Those guys for the Tigers are really good there. They're very fan-friendly. And, uh, you know, that's a Triple Crown winner. And I got that piece, and it'll be on my wall one day, and the shelf's hanging on my shelf right now, or the helmet's on my shelf right now. So it's one of my favorite pieces. I thought I'd share it with you. And, of course, this is all a part of a new segment I am doing here, Autograph of the Day. And, uh, of course, we'll do these every live broadcast. Those live broadcasts are Monday and Thursday, 8 p.m., Make sure you tune in. I try to have as much content as I can, talk to you guys as much as I can, and really bring in some solid content. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. One more time, don't forget to go check out Lorandi Gloves. Again, Premier Gloves, 18 different colors you can choose from. Go customize your own glove. If you want to find something for Christmas early on this year, go do it. If you got a birthday coming up, you got a baseball player that's, frankly, baseball season is just around the corner, Little League is just around the corner, I wish I had one of these gloves when I played. My glove was as basic as they come. The Randy gloves would have fixed that. Of course, that didn't end up getting to happen. But, again, go check them out. 
website and phone number is right there, www.lorandagloves.com. Go check those guys out. They're very good to you. I promise you will not be you will not be disappointed. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. I really appreciate you, as always, tuning in. Always means a lot to me. Thank you for being active in the chat tonight. And, of course, I will be around uh, Thursday, more than likely. Hopefully, we'll have some more news to talk about. Hopefully, there will be a lot more going on with the Braves. And, of course, they'll be gearing up, I believe, for their first game against Tampa Bay in spring training. That will be, I believe, on Saturday or Sunday. I believe on Saturday, though. Don't quote me on that. But, again, as always, Thank you so much for tuning in. Share this with your friends. Like this video. I really appreciate it. As always, you guys have been great to me tonight. Really appreciate it. I'm going to get out of here. I'm actually going to go eat my dinner and uh, enjoy it. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on deck.